proliferative type of benign epithelial lesions. It is the continuation of topic of fibrocystic changes from the section of breast. As the topic is of very little importance because of the close resemblance to the carcinoma and very little differentiating features, so we will discuss it briefly. Benign epithelial lesions. As I have already described you in the previous lecture, that these lesions are actually characterized by the changes in the epithelium of the duct and the acini of the labule. These lesions are most common in the premenopausal women because of the changes in the level of estrogen. According to the risk of developing carcinoma in the breast, these lesions are divided into the two types, the non-proliferative type and the proliferative type. The term fibrocystic changes is used for the non-proliferative type and these are the lumpy bumpy breasts. There are no risk of developing carcinoma in the non-proliferative type, while the proliferative type is associated with the development of carcinoma in the breast. The proliferative type is further divided into the two types, that is the proliferative type without atypia and the proliferative type with atypia. The proliferative type without atypia is characterized by the proliferation of the epithelial cells and the lesions contains the cells that are not lonal, that, are, that, is, that means they are not similar in characteristic with each other. And these lesions are not associated with any genetic changes in it. The lesions of the proliferative type without atypia are not the true precursors of the carcinoma of the breast. The proliferative type with atypia is characterized by the atypical hyperplasia, which means that there is a clonal proliferation of the cells. These cells are actually similar in characteristic to each other. The histological and the morphological features of the proliferative type with atypia are similar to the carcinoma in situ of the breast and there happens to be the genetic changes in the cells of the lesions. The chances of developing carcinoma of the breast in proliferative type without atypia are 1.5 to 2 times, while the chances of developing breast cancer in proliferative type with atypia are 4 to 5 times. The proliferative type with atypia is further divided into two types, the ductal type and the lobular type. The ductal type has a close resemblance to the ductal carcinoma in situ of the breast while the lobular type has a close resemblance to the lobular carcinoma in situ of the breast. The lobular type is also known as the pagetoid disease because its features resemble to the paget disease of the breast. In this lecture, we will be discussing the gross morphology and the histological features of the proliferative type of the benign epithelial lesions. The gross morphological features of the proliferative type of benign epithelial lesions are of very little importance because there are no such differentiating features to recognize them on gross morphology. Grossly, the proliferative type without atypia are characterized by the sclerosing adenosis. As I have already told you, the adenosis means the increase in the number of SNI per lobule, while the term sclerosing is used because of the fibrous stoma formation or excessive connective tissue development, that is the stromal fibrosis. The sclerosing adenosis may appear as palpable mass on palpation and a radiographic density on mammogram and may also appear as calcification on the radiogram. Complex sclerosing lesions may also appear grossly in the proliferative type without atypia. These are actually the combination of the three things that is the sclerosing adenosis, papillomas and the epithelial hyperplasia. These complex sclerosing lesions appear as the radial scar or the radial masses that resemble to the invasive carcinoma. Then the papillomas may also be seen in the proliferative type without atypia. The papillomas are actually the papillary growth or the finger-like projections or the growth that are seen in the lectiferous sinuses or ductal system of the breast. They mainly occur in the dilated duct. Clinically, the papillomas appear as the bloody discharge from the nipple and these papillomas may come into view as palpable mass on palpation. The proliferative type with atypia resembles closely to the carcinoma in situ of the breast. The ductal type resembles closely to the ductal carcinoma in situ, while the lobular type resembles closely to the lobular carcinoma in situ grossly. A picture from the Robbins pathology have clearly shown you the radial sclerosing lesions. On the mammogram, you can clearly see the central mass with the long radio-dense projections in it. And grossly, you can clearly see the central mass with the irregular projections in it. They appear as the star-like masses and they resemble mostly to the invasive carcinoma of the breast. On histopathology, the proliferative type without atypia depicts epithelial hyperplasia. Normally, there is double layer of myoepithelial and the luminal cells in the duct and the acini of the lobule. But 
in epithelial hyperplasia you will see the increased numbers of luminal and the myoepithelial cells that fill and stand the ducts and the lobules in sclerosing adenosis you will see the increased number of sni in the lobule and there is also the stromal fibrosis this stromal fibrosis may completely compress the lumens to create the appearance of solid cords or double strands of cells lying within the dense stroma in complex sclerosing lesions you will see a central nidus of entrapped lens in a hyalinized stroma which is surrounded by long radiating projections in papilloma you will see the papillomal growth within the dilated duct and the multiple branching fibrovascular cords sometimes the epithelial hyperplasia and apocrine metaplasia may also be seen in the histological pictures the large duct papilloma are situated in the lactiferous sinuses while the small duct papilloma are situated in the ductal system of the breast in ductal proliferative type with atypia you will see the atypical hyperplasia in which there is proliferation of regularly spaced cells that partially fill the involved duct these cells are monomorphic that is they are closely related to each other and they resemble to those of ductal carcinoma in situ the only differentiating feature between the ductal carcinoma in situ and ductal proliferative benign epithelial lesion with atypia is that in ductal proliferative benign epithelial lesion with atypia cells partially fill the involved duct while in dcis cells may completely fill the involved duct similarly in lobular proliferative type with atypia cells resemble to those of lobular carcinoma in situ and these cells are also monomorphic that is they are similar in characteristic to each other and the differentiating feature between the lobular carcinoma in situ and lobular proliferative benign epithelial lesion with atypia is that in lobular proliferative type with atypia cells do not fill more than 50% of the acni within the lobule moreover these atypical lobular cells may lie between the ductal basement membrane and overlying normal luminal cells we will discuss the pictures from the robbins pathology one by one depicting epithelial hyperplasia sclerosing adenosis complex sclerosing lesions or radial sclerosing lesions papilloma growth and ductal proliferative type with atypia and the lobular proliferative type with atypia in normal epithelium of the duct and the acni there are two types of the cells that is the myoepithelial cells and the luminal cells the myoepithelial cells consist of the scanty cytoplasm and the nucleus which is compact while the luminal cells consist of the abundant cytoplasm and the large nucleus consisting of the nucleolus this is the normal epithelium of the duct and the acni here you can see the epithelial hyperplasia in which there is the heterogeneous population of the luminal and the myoepithelial cells in the lumen and these are the irregular fenestrations at the periphery the increased number of the cells represent the epithelial hyperplasia here these these are the increased number of cells in sclerosing adenosis there is the increased number of the acni per lobule these all are the acni in the lobule and there is also the fibrous tissue formation or the fibrous stroma for the term sclerosing and these all the acni are arranged in swirl pattern these acni are compressed by the increased fibrous tissue formation or the fibrosis in the stroma radial sclerosing lesions or the complex sclerosing lesions consist of the component from the epithelial hyperplasia sclerosing adenosis and the papilloma let we find all of these component in this picture this is the central nidus containing the small number of the tubules in it these tubules are entrapped in the fibrous stroma this is the fibrous stroma and there is the cyst formation in it epithelial hyperplasia can also be differentiated in this picture and this uh, central nidus form the star like structure consisting of the projections from it these are the projections extending from the central nidus this is a typical histological picture of intraductal papilloma in which you can clearly see the central 
fibrovascular core this is the central fibrovascular core surrounded by the luminal and the myoepithelial cells these papillary structures are arising from the wall of the duct this is the whole duct containing the papillary structures in the lumen in atypical ductal hyperplasia of the proliferative type you can clearly see the duct containing the mixed populations of the cells that is the columnar cells at the periphery and the more rounded cells in the center in this picture you can clearly see the peripheral spaces are also present in it which represent that the whole of the duct is not filled with the cells in atypical lobular hyperplasia the lobules are partially filled with the monomorphic cells these cells are identical to each other but the histological and even the morphological features of both the ductal and the lobular hyperplasia are not sufficient to differentiate them from the carcinoma in situ thank you for watching the video hope you will find this video helpful productive and practical hey warriors be productive and like share and comment the video subscribe my youtube channel and press the bell icon so that you will never miss any update from morphopath